Hey, Brian from Workspace Admins here. Today we'll show you how to set up calendar interrupt between Microsoft and Google. So this could be very useful when you go through a merger or an acquisition. So we have a brand new document or notes from the field document that we just completed. So this is already in the shared rev and we'll share the link to the document in the description of the video. So there are two parts to calendar interrupt. So the first part is to allow Google Calendar users to set, see the exchange availability data. And the second part is the other way around to allow exchange users to see cal Google Calendar availability data. So we'll start with the first option. So there are a few uh, prep work that you need to do. So uh, you first need to expose the user's calendars so that the role account that you will create. So role account is basically a licensed user. So we recommend having a designated account like calendar interrupt at yourdomain.com. So once that user is created, uh, we'll now switch over to the uh, Azure AD console. So we need to create an uh, application here. So under app registrations, we have already created an app here. So this is very similar to setting up a GAM, for example, on a GCP console. So there are a few things that you need to do, you need to do here. So first, you need to get the uh, token OAuth 2.0 uh, token endpoint URL. So you can just copy and save, it, save that somewhere. And you also need the client ID. You can copy from here. And the secret client secret is only shown once. So you, if you don't see the value here, you just need to create a new client secret and save this somewhere. So on the bottom right, I am in my Google Admin console. Uh, so if you follow the breadcrumb here, so it's apps, Google Workspace, settings for calendar, calendar interrupt management. So this is where you will fill in the details related to the app that you just created. So the uh, Exchange Web Services URL. So if you are using uh, 365, this will be the same. Exchange role account is the user account that you created. And we recommend using modern authentication. So token endpoint URL, your client ID, and the secret shown here. And then you can check the boxes as needed. So Google's documentation has a bit of an incorrect information or has a link to a incorrect uh, Microsoft documentation. And that is the manifest or the API permissions. So Google's documentation simply says to configure this permission that says add a per by clicking on add a permission. However, this is no longer possible. So what you need to do is update a manifest here. So, uh, so Google's documentation points to Graphy API. Uh, but uh, we need to use Exchange Web Services API. So if you just search for full access as app EWS, so this will show you an article from Microsoft or I'll search for Exchange Web Services. That is in the notes from the document here actually. So I'll just search for that. Microsoft article. So we need to use this option here. So you need to basically copy this and then between line 51 and 50, 61, you need to update that or you can just update the resource app ID, resource access ID and type. So this is not as important, but this uh, ID under resource access is what's most important to give it the role. So if you switch over to the API permissions here, you will, this will be either yellow or red. You just need to click on the three dots and, uh, or grant admin for um, your domain. So this is uh, a prerequisite. So once that's done, this will allow Google Calendar users to see the exchange availability data. So we've already completed those steps. So we'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to switch over to Google Calendar here and Exchange Calendar here. So as you can see, I have my Exchange user. Uh, in this case, my user is Brian at gws.wtf. So I'm just going to try to schedule a meeting here. 
and I'll add Ryan at GWSWFTF. And I'll just click on more options, find the time. And you can see that I can uh, see that Brian is unavailable at eight o'clock or was unavailable at the time. So in order to help with the autocomplete, there are two things you can do. So you can create the contact for the user, or you can also create the contact using domain shared contacts API. So we have gone over that a few times on in other videos. So uh, you can use GAM to create contacts in batch. So now we'll go through the steps of setting calendar interrupt the other way around to allow Exchange users to look up uh, Google Calendar availability data. So we'll scroll down here. So the steps that you need to follow are through uh, calendar.google.com slash exchange slash tools. So capitalization is important. So it's capital E for exchange. So when you click on execute here, uh, it'll ask you to sign in to a uh, Google account to authorize a tool. So that tool needs to be authorized by a your role account. So again, we recommend using uh, a system or service account like calendar interrupt at your domain.com and with a standard uh, regular user account rather than using a super admin because super admins can see everybody's details. So once you execute Execute it, it will download a credential that that. So that is the file that you need to for the other step. So if you click on execute here, so we'll just click on execute here to show you what that looks like. So if you click on generate new credentials, it'll walk you through the steps. So you from here you'll use another account and complete the steps. And then once the file is downloaded here. You can see credentials that that is there, upload. And then here is where you will need to e enter the email address of the account on Exchange. So that will be calendar interop at gws.wtf for us. And then here we'll enter workspace admins.org domain. And then it'll generate a PowerShell command for you run for you to run. And we'll just go back to the PowerShell command that we ran. So, so that is also in the notes from the field document. So the simple PowerShell command from Google support article is pasted here. So that's the command that we ran. And once the availability space has been added, you will see that um, the outputs of what that looks like. And we have also added uh, documentation from Microsoft so you can review the PowerShell command before running it. So once that's done, it'll allow uh, the lookup from Microsoft to Google, but there is one more item that you need to do. So in order for you to look up availability from Exchange to Google, you need to create a mail contact. So you can either do that manually from uh, Exchange Admin Center, or you can use PowerShell to uh, create the contact one by one or in batch. So we have added Microsoft documentation again, so you can do that. So I'll go over to the Workspace Admins calendar here. I'll just cancel this. So I'm just going to look at Steve and Kim's calendar. So I created a meeting for them at seven o'clock today. So, so they had a meeting at seven o'clock today. I'm going to go to my Exchange calendar here. So I had a meeting at seven, so I'll add Steve and Kim. So let's... Click on more options here. You can see that they had a meeting at seven o'clock, so it's showing as red. So that's what calendar interrupt looks like from exchange side. So that's uh, how you set up calendar interrupt between Microsoft and Google. The steps are relatively straightforward. Uh, so we try to distill the information that's in Google support article because it is quite long and can be daunting. But as a matter of fact, it's a little over three pages of uh, documentation for you to read. So hopefully this was fairly straight for you. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe to our channel. Um, 
if you have any questions, please also leave us some comments below in the video and we'll be able to answer them. Thanks. Bye.